Here's Black, what's going on, baby? Good day, baby. Teach him how to win in life. What's up, what's up, hey, what's up? Kobe perfected the shit though. Didn't he? He perfected it. Yeah, yes, Without he a did. doubt. Sand crystal. Mm -hmm. It's the one right here. Yes, how you feeling, bro? Good. So I wanted to bring you back to the channel due to the response to the last video you were featuring. I thought that you would be a great representation of entrepreneurship being from the city of the deep. Hey, let's dive right into who is Darius Blackman, your upbringing, and how you got started in business ownership. Darius Blackman, I say, uh, you know, man of, uh, man of God, you know, strong believer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, uh, been been, been, was raised with two parents. I said I was a military brat, so I grew up partially. This is this is crazy, but I grew up partially in Europe. Oh, okay. So I was actually born in Nashville, Tennessee, slash Kentucky. You know, one side of the hospital was Tennessee, the other side was Kentucky. Okay. And then uh, after Kentucky, we went ahead and my parents moved to Germany. So being a Euro baby, I grew up in Germany. You know, what I'm saying partially. Okay. And after Germany, we went ahead and actually moved to Washington State. And uh, after Washington State, that's where I landed right here in Detroit. I came here about 11 or 12, so about okay. 12 years old. And uh, honestly, I got honestly I got kicked out of all Washington public schools. Okay. Because I wasn't a trouble kid. I was, you know, I was a good kid, but at the same time, I got into a little altercation. Uh, you know, it had, you know, they had a thing against F F ethnicity back then. Oh yeah, absolutely. Where, where we had a lot of racial di discrimination going on. So I was a kid, and I had the experience that as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So with the racial discrimination, uh, I remember riding my bike with my father down the street as a kid, and uh, I remember some white boys pulled up and they they pulled out their shotguns and cocked them back and they said get from around here boy oh wow you know what i'm saying what my father mm. so <clears throat> so that's me as a kid experiencing that in washington state and then uh actually after washington state um the reason why we ended up leaving because i got into an altercation i was like in the fifth grade fifth grade going to the sixth grade and sixth grade is elementary school is still there okay it's middle school here it's a yeah. little different ball game right so um I was the only black kid in my school, so I got into a little altercation, and um, and uh, the guy pulled out a <clears throat> he pulled out a butterfly knife on me, and I had a I had a, a, a fake gun, a water gun, and I painted the tip, and uh, I told him I was watching uh, South Central, <laughs> okay, watching South Central, <laughs> yeah. Menace to Society around right. that time, and that's my only black card, you know, during that time, because okay. I wasn't around no black people right. besides my parents, right? Now they was born and raised in Detroit, okay, so. So, so I still had the soul in me. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't like off. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, so that 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 um that gun I had brought to school, and I had the little tip painted. And uh, he told me like, yeah, I'm about to cut you. I'm about to cut you, slice you up. He opened that butterfly knife, bro. And I went ahead and said, I bust a cap in you. Watch the South Central Deuce. Okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? So yeah, who would Deuce? I'm yep. like, I bust a cap in you. Right. Like that. So I got kicked out of all Washington public schools, and my parents said. He fit in in Detroit. Just okay. Like that. So they brought me here. So they came back home, huh? <laughs> he came back home. Yeah. And uh, they I, said he a true city boy. <laughs> yeah, came back home, true city boy. I, yeah. I got to a fight my first day of school here, and that was then I blended. It was all good from there. So uh, when you when you touched down here in the city, was you on the east side or the west side? I, I touched down first on the west side, but I went to east side school. Okay. So I was at Farwell Middle School. Get out of here, yeah, bro. I was at Farwell. Wow, yeah. man. I was at Farwell too, bro. Wow. Yeah. That's why you look familiar before I met I, you. Hey, now. I said the same thing Farwell. about you, bro. bro. Yeah. 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 We bro. probably know all the same people. Hey, how you doing? 
Yeah, listen. <laughs> hey, Darius, when I met you, I said the same thing. I'm like, man, he looked familiar, man. I can't put my finger on it, though, bro. That's what it is. Yeah, we yep. Know from Farwell. We go back to middle school. Yeah. Bro. So I pretty much know everybody that went to Persian. Yeah. Uh, you know. Persian. Yeah. Brother. So listen. Oh, okay. Oh, man. So that, that's exactly. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. Makes sense now. That's yep. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we ain't seen each other in the daytime. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it now. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so per okay. So Persian. In far, what, Farwell, Persia. Okay. So, so I came here, came to uh, Farwell Middle School, and uh, it was it was one of those things where, where uh, like I said, I got to a fight my first day in school, you know. Okay. And uh, after that, I remember I remember my cousin. He came he came to my rescue on one of the all, one of the situations. Man, his name's Donald Brown. Shout out to my cousin Donald Brown. Okay. Right? So my cousin, he was like, "Hey, little cousin." What, what's going on? You ain't got to fight these battles yourself. It was like 20 dudes out there waiting on me. They had chains and locks and all of this stuff. And my cousin was like, Oh, that's how they used to get down back in the day with them locks, man. man. They, yeah. They had the chains and locks. Yeah. And my little cousin said, No, nah, he's with me. Okay. He good. Just like okay. that. So he told them, uh, my guy, hey, he told my guy, John Cooper. That's my guy. Okay. He told John Cooper and them, he's like, Hey, chill out. He with me. And then he was like, yeah, okay, look, cuz, you straight. I said, well, I was straight anyway. I was mm -hmm. No <laughs> doubt, no doubt. So I was straight anyway. So I was, you know, I was a little league football player, okay. All-American and all of that. Okay. But then I came here and, uh, like I said, went to Farwell and ended up playing for the Eastside Cowboys. Man. Eastside Cowboys. Man, oh, yeah. So you already right know there in Persia, yeah. yeah, no doubt. So you know how that went, Eastside yep, yep. Cowboys. And Shout out to them. They did their thing. And hey, hey, look, man, real quick with the Eastside Cowboys. I tried out, man. I remember I was about 11, 12 years old, man. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in a as a foster kid. Yeah. So I was adopted, whatever. And, uh, she wouldn't pay. Hey, man, what's up, bro? What up, you all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, She wouldn't pay for the startup fee, man. Really? Yeah, I was just in a bad situation, man. Okay. They offered me a quarterback position and everything, man. Oh, man. Yeah, listen, yep. Listen, but you quarterback and not. Yeah, and, there we and, go. And you quarterback and not, bro, hey, we... and, and you leading your team to a championship. No doubt, man. I appreciate so, that, so, bro. Hey, I'm just happy to be a part of it, man. Oh, we yeah. All, we all rolling, so that's where we at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, but Eastside Cowboys, you okay. said. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it, it was one of the things I ended up playing there, but I was already, like, All-American in the other school. Okay. The other teams I played for. Okay. And that was the Lakeside Rams in Washington State. Okay. Lakeside Rams. So I went to the All-Star Games and all of that. <laughs> And then I came here, Eastside Cowboys, I did the same thing. Okay. All-star all, all team. Okay. Uh, I went, we, we did that All-American here. Then after uh, Eastside Cowboys, I went ahead and went to Persian. So Persian High School. Okay. You know? And when I went to Persian, man, that that was that, that was murder she wrote. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt. So Persian was murder she wrote. You heard Mr. Tooby. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, no doubt. Crazy over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, um, we, we about to open the seat to the uh, Chuck's Adidas thing. Oh, okay. oh, that's going on today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to have to check that out, too. We're about to go over there real, we about to go over there real fast. Okay. And just, just going back, you know, show Cody and some love. Go right. backstage and kick it for a minute. And yeah. Over there for about an hour. Yeah, we're going to yeah. probably come back over here. <laughs> you did yours? Man, I didn't go through. Yeah. I What do Darius Blackman do? You know, well, Darius Blackman is a serial entrepreneur. So, I'm an actor, film producer. I also have a uh, exotic car rental business. I'm a photographer. <laughs> hey, brother, it ain't too much to have to touch, man. So, Darius, what inspired you to become a business owner? It was uh, it was one of the decisions where it was like go to the NFL or or be the owner of be your own boss, be be the owner of a business, you know, a corporation or whatever. You know, the NFL it was one of those things where I, I had an offer to you know walk on and, and do my thing and play you know play professional football and and uh, like I said so so I was I was doing my thing. You know, okay. I went to college. I went to three different universities. You know. Uh, Went ahead and played for Bowling Green State University. 
played for Urban Meyer. You know, he became an NFL coach as well. Okay. Uh, I played for uh, Ryan, first Randy Ball. That was from Missouri State University. So Urban Meyer was born in Green. Randy Ball was Missouri State University. Hold on, one moment, Derek. So Randy Ball was Missouri State University. Okay. And then I played for uh, last school was Grand Valley State University. Okay. So we won the national championships, you know, okay. back to back to back. To nice, back. nice. You know what I'm saying? Went like uh -huh. five years in a row, won four of them. I was a part of the back to back team. For okay. Grand Valley State University. That was 2003. What I did was I decided whether I wanted to do professional football and continue to play ball or go ahead and start my own business. I always had the dream to do my own business. Okay. So business is where it's at. Um, I, I was a photographer since Motown Portraits way back. I was taking everybody senior pictures way back in high school. Okay. So but I was also the picture man on the side. So I was doing a lot of parties and picture man stuff in the club. So would you say photography was your first hustle? Photography was Sound like your first hustle in yeah, business. Yeah, photography was my first legitimate hustle. Okay. In you okay. Know, so that's that's what all actually started everything. Okay. So I was doing all the hair magazines, uh, hair hair designer, uh, prestige hair magazine. Okay. So I was traveling around shooting everybody's senior pictures and doing the hair magazines around around the world actually. So Damn. National that's, book. Hey, that's nice. Yeah, I was doing uh, and this post. Man, all the posters you've seen in your barbershops. Right, right. The ones on the movies, the barbershop and everything. Right. So I'm the photographer behind those posters that you've been seeing throughout the years, too. Man. Uh, uh, shout, out to man. Tra shout out to Tracy Gilliam. So he, he was the one that had the contract with Anders. You know, okay. He brought me, contracted me as a photographer to come in and do my thing. You got a lot of exposure as a young man. I always say, man, exposure expands the mind. So you really get started. Uh, and, and photography, man, but you know, networking and stuff like that. I like that, man. Early, brother. Yeah. I, I, I was doing photography now. It's been over 20, 27 years. Okay. 25 years, man. So I was 25 years, bro. That's what it was. Man. Okay. I was young. I was young, man. I, I was doing it since high school. You know, Motown Portraits, like in, uh, I started in like the eighth grade. Eighth grade, they brought me in. Okay. Shout out to uh, Colette Williams. Okay. You know, the owner of Motown Portraits. And, you know, now his son, uh, Nathan, Nathaniel Williams okay. took over, you know, and um, that's right on Living Noise. Okay. So I used to catch the bus from Persian over there, down Seven Mile. Yeah, you know down Seven saying? Mile, bro. Yeah, yeah, down for seven sure. Seven Mile with the wolves. Yeah, with you the already know. And the gorillas. You Man. Know what I'm saying? Hey, there was a big dog shit. Man. You know what I'm saying? So, you had to be prepared. Yeah, came yep. out of Persian, was dodging bullets and yep. everything yep. to get to work. It was like that in those years, bro, for hey, sure. To get to work, so uh -huh. they, they ain't up on it, man. Yeah. You know, so coming from the east side, coming from the east side, you got a whole different type of legitimacy, a whole different type yeah. of raising coming right. from the east side. You you had to dodge some bullets, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, you didn't see it. You didn't see it Absolutely. at all, you know? But I, I made it to work still, uh -huh. and on time. Mm -hmm. And then I still I still had to go to football practice, you know, and do my thing. Okay. And, you know, and do, do my thing, and uh, with that, Hey, I'll just say it, it made me who I am today. Okay. It taught me discipline. Football taught me discipline as well. Uh, of course, my father did. You know, I had my mother and father. They were raised. Okay. I, I was raised in a two, two, two parent household. You know what's crazy, man? Yeah. yeah. Out of a class of 25 students when I was coming up, I don't know if we were on the same age, man, but I would say maybe five kids knew their father. Man, it, it was bad back it, then, it, man. It, More right. fathers are stepping up now. That is true. That is true. Than ever. That's true. Now, yeah. now black fathers are stepping yeah. in and, and, and doing 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 their thing. Man. Okay. You know, and, and that's you, they gotta fight for it. If not, you gotta yeah. fight for it. Sometimes the fathers make it a little hard, man. Right. <laughs> I just say I'm experienced. We all experience in that. With everything you just shared, would you say that's how you develop your confidence? I, I would say yeah. I would say that that's that's Part of my develop of the confidence, man, and as far as I say, having this, the, the structure, household with the with the family, but at the same time, uh, playing playing football and always being like the team captain. Team oh, okay. Um, you know, and I had to kind of fight fight for that. You know? Okay. Also was a uh, also was an artist. You know, I was an artist, man. I used to like to draw, so I was in the art and essay contest. Same here, bro. From, yeah. From the end. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. So I went into barbering after drawing, man. I, I, so a lot of barbers, man, I find uh, funny that they was 
artist. They, yeah, they yeah. passion was uh, drawing That's at first. Up. Yeah, yeah. And matter of fact, I cut my own hair. I'm okay, a, I, yeah. I'm not a barber, but I cut my own. Okay. Because I used to draw my ass off, man. Yeah. I, I did um, the art and essay contest, the NAACP. Okay. Art and essay contest, uh, when they was doing it, all the work went to the African American like, Museum and the, the museums and stuff. Okay. And uh, I was placing like first or second place like every year. Okay. I got, uh, they gave me the Spirit of Detroit Award for it. Uh, I drew a picture of uh, Colin Powell. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I drew a pic picture of uh, Dr. David Sneed, I think the Detroit superintendent, the superintendent okay. uh, at the time. And I remember they came up to Farwood Middle School and brought the camera crew and all okay. that stuff, took pictures of the class and all that. So so that was drawing. Yeah. But I say this, football, football, I, I say shout out to my father for being a leader too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, but football actually, Gave, put that dog in me. Okay. It put that dog in me a little different where it gave me the fight, you know, to, to take it to the You couldn't level. get out on that field and fold, man. You yeah. had to go out there, you know what I'm saying, with, with a sense of confidence. Most, most definitely. Yeah. All single mothers right now. Yeah. I'm going to tell them right now, make sure you definitely, definitely put, if you got a young man that doesn't have a father as a chaperone, put your, put, your, put your son in sports. Put your son in sports. Put him in football right now. And it's going to develop a, a sense of discipline first. That's gonna be his daddy. The sports is gonna be his daddy. I mean, if not, if not football, put him in basketball. Mm -hmm. but football, they're a little tough on you. You okay. know what I'm saying? And it's, it's gonna give him that uh, sense of urgency to win. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's gonna make him feel feel good to win. So he's not only gonna win on the field, but it's gonna teach him how to win in life. Yeah. You know, he's gonna apply that when yeah. it comes down to a job and somebody they got this these skills and he got these skills. That dog is gonna come out of him mm -hmm. in, in that aggression where he, it's gonna be a different type of fight. Okay. You ain't gonna be able to beat that beast right yeah. there. So I, I would tell all single mothers, please, if you feel like you're gonna have a hard time with your little boys, do it at an early age and keep them in it. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they say that they don't want to play football, yeah. they don't want to play a sport. Make them play. Yeah. My mama made me play. Yeah. She dropped me off on the field. Yeah. She dropped me off on the field and left me out there. And I'm like, what? What happened? Mm -hmm. You know. I was a little kid. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm a basketball player. She said, no, you're going to play football today. Mm -hmm. And then when they when they stepped out on the field, the coach said, I'm your mama and your daddy. Yeah. That day, mm -hmm. I'm looking back for mama to save me. they like, no, nigga, run a lap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. like, so, so I say that, that, that football put put a little bit more ambition in that dog. Game. Right, right. You know, and then. This was causing a lot of these young kids to be so emotional, man, not yeah. having that structure. Yeah. And that guidance from men. Yeah, it'll take them off the street. Right. They won't have time to think about the street. Okay. So all my guys that was on the street breaking in the windows of people's basements to come into your house, you know what I'm saying? Uh huh. I, I was like, while they doing that, I'm like, hey, I, I got to make it to football practice. Right. I can't be late. Right. So they breaking in the window. I'm trying to get to practice. Mm -hmm. So we just had a different mindset on that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Put, make sure you put the young men in football and sports mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Hey, let's touch on uh. You being a leader in situations like that as a young as a young kid, man, what developed your leadership? Yeah, I know we talked a lot about football and stuff like yeah. that, but it's different once you hit that concrete and being on a being in the street with the wolves, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We on the street with the wolves. I would say what what helped me with what my leadership is by me having a father. Okay. And by him telling me not to do certain things, like when I was walking outside my wave cap, he'd be like, "Son, hey, take that shit off your head, man." You know, and him saying that to me, take that off your head. He like, I don't want you to play them. I don't want you to look like the rest of them niggas. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he would tell me that, and I'm like, man, you don't know what you're talking about. But I understand it now. Absolutely. I understand it now. You know what I'm saying? Some mm -hmm. things to look ghetto. Mm -hmm. So he wanted me to be presentable. Absolutely. To be more conservative to separate myself from uh, blending in. Absolutely. That's all. That's yeah. all. Because when they get caught in the lineup on who did it, they all did it. Everybody did it. Everybody looked the same. Everybody yep. looked the same. Everybody did it. So, so he separated that, you know, mm -hmm. part of that. So that got me to teach now, you know, young men and men, when you look good, you feel good. Yeah. So dress, dress for yourself, but dress for success. So, uh, hey,
Detroit special, man. Detroit is special. Detroit man. is special, man. And we on the map now too, man. We, hey, we definitely on the yep. map. And, and you got you got gentlemen like you, man, thanks to uh City Vibes. Yeah, for sure, know, man. And that, that's putting us on the map even more. For sure. Because a lot of people don't know all the highlights of Detroit. They don't know the, the nice cars that Detroit have. They don't know the beautiful people that Detroit has. Yeah, man. And, 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 uh, they was running the city through the mud, man, on social media. I'm like, man, we got to we gotta show a, a different light, man. Oh, man. That's all they show. That's yeah. All they show. They want to show up being ratchet, man. We, yeah. Like, we sophisticated, man. We oh, yeah. business owners. We, we really getting money in Detroit. Mm -hmm. They say that we broke. Broke the city of the nation and all the yeah. bad brought Detroit. got money, man. Oh, yeah. Tell them don't play with us, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, Darius, man. I want to hit you with some fun questions, bro. Yeah, for sure. Rank these players from greatest to least. Okay. MJ, LeBron James, and Kobe Bryant. Okay, from greatest to least. Greatest to least. MJ would be the greatest to me. Kobe Bryant and then LeBron James. Okay, okay. Yeah, LeBron, he, he cool. You know, he, he stat-wise, he he built his numbers up. But uh, as far as... Uh, you know, we came up in that era, man. Yeah, that came, Jordan era, bro. So. Listen, Jordan started this shit. Absolutely. And then everybody wanted to be number 23. So they all copied Jordan. Man. Absolutely. You know, um, you know, Kobe, Kobe, he mimicked Jordan down to the shot, down to the foot up, man. everything. Old everything. walk, man. That shit fucked me up, man. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah, Jordan started this shit for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, hey, Kobe perfected the shit, though. Didn't he? He perfected it. Yeah, yes, Without a did. doubt. Mm -hmm. LeBron make a lot of mistakes, but his numbers are still looking good. He oh, yeah. And he winning championships. Absolutely. So they all great, man. They all great. I like LeBron, too. You feel me? Yeah. All right, next question, Darius, man. It's yeah. a concert going, my bad, it's a comedy show going on in the city. Yeah. Mike Epps, Kevin Hart, and Cat Williams. Which one you attended? Mike Epps, Kevin Hart, and Cat Williams. Yes, sir. I was going to have to be Kevin, man. Okay. Had to be Kevin Hart, man. Kevin Hart, you know, he's still a, a thorough, thoroughbred, you know, and uh, he, he legit. I like I like what he do. Okay. Uh, Cat Williams, to me, is a snitch. Crybaby ass nigga, man. I don't fuck with that, you okay. know. I don't like that. You know, everybody thanked him for telling and all of that shit. Told me he going to just tell the truth. I don't like niggas that tell on other niggas, man. It's right. not cool. Just, just speak for yourself. Definitely when you're doing the same shit as other niggas. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, fam? How, yeah, how you feeling? How you feeling, brother? Chilling. I don't fuck with that. You know, everybody supported that shit. Yep. Talking about he told the truth. That's cool. It is mm -hmm. what it is. And I get it. So, nigga might have robbed you. That's cool. Take mm -hmm. it up with that nigga. Don't that get was that only shit. good for entertainment, man. Yeah. Not for the real nigga. So if a nigga yeah. robbed you, take it up with that right. nigga. Go see Absolutely. that nigga. I'm not finna go tell everybody else. Dude, that nigga robbed me. No, I'm gonna go see you, nigga. Uh -huh. That's what it is. So we different. That's all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next question. You can only listen to one artist for an entire week, man. Who you yeah. who you rocking? Who you rocking with, man? One artist for an entire week. One artist, bro. Right now for an entire week. One artist. You know what? It used to be Young Dolph, believe it or not. I okay. like I like Young Dolph, but uh, for an entire week to, to keep me calm, focused and everything, I might have to rock with Kim. Hey, there we go. I'll bro. rock with Kim. I, I went to this concert uh last year. Was that last year? Was that the Aretha? Man, it was last year. Yeah. I, man, I, I try not to miss none of them. Kim, oh yeah, man. Kim got the best concerts. Absolutely. He's one of the greatest performers. He knows how to entertain the crowd, get them locked in, and, and get them all emotional. He gets you. Uh, if you bring a lady with you, you get you hugging your lady, talking mm -hmm. to her, telling her something great. Uh, it just, it's just he knows what he's doing. He knows, he knows exactly what he's doing. Kim is great. What he, at what he does. Mm -hmm. yeah, so shout out to Kim. No doubt. No doubt. Sure. Definitely agree with you on that one. Uh, Last but not least, man, what city would you call your second home? Second home would be Atlanta all day. Okay. Atlanta is where uh, where I plan on residing to. Uh, that's where I plan on making my, you know, my uh, my, my continuous flow, and um, I'll say more millions. Okay. And um, Atlanta is where where I definitely need to set up shop at next. That's my next home. Shout out to Atlanta. I'm coming for you, baby. <laughs>
were you introduced to credit? Credit. Okay, I was introduced to credit where um, when uh, when it came down to uh, when it came down to supposedly buying buying my first house. You ain't one of y'all have a cigarette. I ain't got no cigarettes. Cause you know, I'm just one of y'all homeless boys out here. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. I understand. Hey, hey I, I got my photo though. Your photo? I got it. <laughs> don't that. be better days. I got it. Don't be that. better days. I know you might need a little something to buy a cup of water, Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Are you good, my bro? Hey, you know, I'm from Mississippi. I'm just one of y'all country boys. Mississippi? Boy. Yes. What part? Greenwood. I got people with Tupelo. Hey, you know what? MVSU is my school. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. MVSU, MVSU, yeah. I'm from the Mississippi. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ain't no okay, you know we got ASU and JSU. Yeah. My family, my family's out of Tupelo, Mississippi. Hey, I know where that's at. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, I'm from the Mississippi. Hey. Then we got all Corn State, Jackson State, and yeah. Mississippi Valley State. Hey, 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 when you get down with the band, yeah, yeah. don't fool with us. Get it, man. Hey, you do your thing, man. God bless you, bro. God bless you. Thank yeah. you, bro. Yeah. The credit, the credit game actually is very important uh, for you to level up for higher. Higher, uh, bigger purchases, you know what I'm saying, such as big buildings, uh, such as houses, such as cars and things like that. When you want to be able to get something without having the full capital, mm -hmm. you, you can tap into your credit. So you do want to have good credit. You know, me personally, I always been a cash guy. Okay. I always been, I always feel like cash is king. Okay. And I always just bought it, you know, paid for it. Whatever okay. it is, uh, everything I have, I own it outright. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So, hey. Paid for. Yeah. Everything is paid for. Right? Oh yeah. So everything is outright. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't I don't owe anybody anything as far as on credit or any financial institutions at the moment. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that, that's how I know we do it. I always pay for my houses outright. Uh, everything got everything. Right? Okay. All right, building, everything I did with the building outright. Okay. No credit. But it is important. And I am going to tap into my credit. I am going to utilize that to buy some more stuff. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Get him in there, baby. Get him in there. Come on, big truck. Come on up. Let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. <laughs> Let's get it, baby. How you doing? Lord, baby, Jesus Joseph. You got your brother. I ain't trying to make you nervous now. Hell Mary. <laughs> Hell Mary. As far as the balance, it's definitely uh, it's my organization. You know, okay. It's my organization. But uh, okay. ultimately, it is a, it's a fight every day. Okay. Because every day, you're trying to make enough money to fight for your freedom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Business definitely uh, is, your, is your freedom. Just don't stop getting to that money. Mm -hmm. You got to get to that paper, man. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that shit broke. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You can't, you can't sit on your ass. You can't be sitting here playing around talking about some, oh, you got women or you got hoes. Nigga, get on with that bullshit. Right, right, get right. Get to your bag. Get mm -hmm. to your purpose. And then you get back to the women later. Women always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Get to your money right now. So that's where I'm at. Give me your short-term goals and your long-term goals. Yeah. Okay, short-term. Short-term goals. I say right now, currently okay. right now. I'm in the middle of, uh, I finished, just finished writing my script. I got a few more little things to add to it, but just finished writing my script for my movie. So right now, I'm about to go ahead and release my film. And uh, well, first, you know, like I said, I'm doing my casting call. I'm doing a few other things because I got a movie and it's going to be a television series. That okay. I'm about to introduce oh, that's me. major right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going to be something, something major. Okay. And uh, I'm looking for uh, local talent, and I'm looking for international talent as well. So I need I need all actors to come out for this one. It's gonna be something. Okay. Something different. Okay. You know, so uh, y'all look out for this project I got coming out. I'll be posting that on Facebook, Instagram, and all of that. Another short term that'll be releasing is I'll be opening up a new establishment, and uh, this new establishment now is gonna be a nice uh, banquet establishment. I always had a banquet hall, so. I, I didn't even talk about that, but I always have a banquet hall. I've had a banquet hall for the last, whew, man, it was about the last 17 years. I had uh, Empire Lounge and I had Oasis Lounge. Uh, right there on Jefferson was Empire Lounge. Mm -hmm. Oasis was on Grand River. So all the people know me from the lofts and, you know, the lofts and everything else. And I had, I had that established for so long, man. And that's what built up my capital to do the majority of the things I want to do. Okay. You know, that banquet hall. I've been teaching other people how to 
built back in home. Okay. In, in, in Detroit alone, I, I, I helped build over 15, 15 banquet halls in Detroit alone. And I taught I taught over 150 people business here in Detroit. Over. Very impressive, over, bro. Over. Over. Yeah. I mean, I built a millionaire, brother. Built hey, a millionaire. Very, very impressive, Seriously. man. And, and, and I, I, was, I was doing it so long for my friends and, and family and people I know. I was doing it so long and giving them knowledge, dropping jewels on them. You know, for free. I just started a program now where I'm actually putting putting together some revenue where I can teach people the process okay. of doing business. Where do you see Darius Blackman in five years? Well, definitely won't be with them. Shout out to uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, Detroit Police. You know, okay. Guys, uh, coming in the no, we ain't going that route. No, we ain't going that route. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, it won't be with them. It won't right. be institutionalized. Like that. Five, no, five years from now. I see Darius Blackman now, uh, now opening up, opening up some new, new establishments, man. I want to chain, I want to chain, uh, I want to chain the facilities, uh, kind of, kind of different states, different cities, and uh, what I'm going for is entertainment centers. So these will be uh, entertainment centers with a lot of festivities in there, as far as uh, the banquet hall, my restaurant. A lot of uh, businesses in the same buildings. Just gonna call that building the black. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I can see this right now in every city, uh, major city. Okay. That that we have that comes on. You know? So I, I, I'm traveling and um, I'm making, I'm putting things in motion at the moment. Floods. I say that they have a more mature, mature crowd. They got the young ones in there now, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To be a more, more mature crowd. Okay. It was grown and sexy. You know now, you know now it's a little bit different. I say it's a little bit different. Okay. You know, but I, I say it's, it's still a good place to go to, good place to hang out. The crowd just changed a little bit. They're a little younger now. That's all. You ever hit the Sky Bar? The Sky Bar on the west side. Yeah, west side. Yeah, yeah, Finkel yeah, and, yeah. Uh, What's that Greenfield? Yeah, the Sky Bar. Them, them the old school. Yeah. Old school, uh, 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 players, the gangsters. Oh yeah, you already like know. Real life, like them. Them niggas put some work in. Yeah, no doubt. At the Sky Bar, and now they now they grown. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, uh, and yeah, the Sky Bar is definitely it. But yeah, I've been definitely been in the Sky Bar. Hey, 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 boy! You taking the shit? Oh, that's it. 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 I was doing an interview with uh, Darius right here, and uh, we just getting a little B rolls and stuff like that. Why y'all fine for no reason? Oh, I appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You coming in? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. No problem. Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all all right? I'm All right. Oh, thanks a lot. You are too. Appreciate you. Okay. Okay. So when I do the cigars, man, I know me do these, uh, Fuller side? Yeah. Quality-wise, this one's better? Same crystals. Okay, let's do this one then. Yeah. Hey, why don't you get a lighter one? A lighter one? I see them today. I got a small one. Uh, Sand crystals. Mm-hmm. It's the one right here. Right, but I still want it very, very good. Keep it together. It kind of matches. Put that on the camera, dude. It's sand crystals right here. Connecticut. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 kind of match the outfit too. It always goes. You know what I'm saying? That was Miami shit. Excuse me. All right, here we go.